Son of a monkey's uncle. Yeah! What's going on? And welcome back to my YouTube channel, Joe Zaccardelli. Today, I'll be taking you all the way back to the 1960s with a classic timepiece, the Eternomatic Contiki 20. I got this off of a friend that wanted to trade for something different. It would run and stop, run and stop, run and stop, till eventually it didn't really want to run anymore. The final straw was the minute hand started to move off of its wheel freely and therefore it really couldn't keep any time. Sometimes when you try working on watches, you wanna just get something new. So that's what he did. He wanted to trade with me. I said, what the heck? I'll go ahead, take it on, see what we can do with it. Now in this video, we're only gonna try to get it to run again. We're not gonna do a COA on it. We're not gonna disassemble every part. We're just gonna go ahead and take it down as far as we need to, reassemble it, and hopefully it'll start up with no problems. He did say it did have a service around, I don't know, two, three years ago. So we're gonna go ahead and see what we find. As we figure out what is possibly wrong with the Eternomatic Contiki, we are gonna take a brief look, kind of the history of Eternomatic, the brand, and also the movement that's inside the Eternomatic Contiki, which I believe is a 1485K. However, we'll know more when we get into the wristwatch itself. Now, before we tear into this watch, will you please take a minute, like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit that notification bell so you're always up to date on what's going on with our channel. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this Eternomatic Contiki 20. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of let you guys in my head. I don't know if that's a good thing. Let you know what I'm thinking. I'm thinking right now it definitely needs a new crystal. The band looks good. The case looks good. However, it is not running. And if you can see the minute hand is Yep, there it is. It is loose and that is not right. So that tells me either the canyon pinion popped off, the hour wheel popped off, the hole that holds that minute hand onto the wheel has gotten damaged, or somehow the dial has pushed it off but if it did that, the hour wheel probably would be off as well. One weird scenario that could have happened is the dial did come loose. The minute hand grabbed one of those markers on the outer edge and then popped itself off possibly. I don't know. The only way to find out is to go ahead and take it apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this bracelet off and case back and while I go ahead and do this, because I'm sure many of you have watched a bracelet being taken apart before, the Eternomatic, you will see a group of five little dots on the dial, on the case, on the crown. And that is a trademark for Eternomatic in the five ball bearing rotor system for their automatic watches. So that's pretty cool. Eterna is a Swiss company founded in 1856 couple fun facts is that they are credited for creating the first alarm wristwatch in 1908 and the first self-winding mechanism in 1948. Here is a case back opener that probably shouldn't be put on the bench because it is a little bit difficult to see and to use this particular one. I just kind of wanted to show you a different tool that is out there that can be used, but not like this. Eternomatics have a very good reputation of being high quality movement in cases. Now in 1960s, Eterna did introduce the Contiki collection, which was specifically designed for underwater exploration. And this became a popular watch among dive enthusiasts. Let's talk about how Eterna came up with the name 
named Kantiki. As you can see here, it looks like a little sailboat with a sail with the Eternomatic trademark. On that gold medallion, that is an actual vessel. And in 1947, Thor Heyerdahl and five companions made a bamboo raft to see if people could sail from Polynesia to South America. That is 6,900 kilometers or 4,300 miles across the Pacific Ocean on nothing but a raft in 1947 he had on his trusted eterna watch they made it from south america to the polynesian islands where they crashed into a reef in 101 days wow so this watch is a tribute to that great expedition back in 1947 as we continue to disassemble this watch as you can see the case holders are different so at one point Someone did switch those apart, around, lost one, flung one, been there. And sometimes it's not always easy. You gotta be patient. And we flip this around and it should just fall right out. Beautiful, beautiful patina on this dial absolutely love it it's not perfect as you can see there the minute hand is loose i mean there is no resistance to that whatsoever and i'm just putting the crown in make sure that the functions still function as they should outside of the minute hand see if we can't get the minute hand to maybe engage the date wheels engaging it's winding it's doing everything it should. It should be running. And right here, uh, that looks like the screw to hold down a leg of the dial and a dial foot. That's what that looks like. So I think we found what the problem was. The dial came up and knocked off the minute hand. I'm gonna go ahead and take these hands off. I use this little Bergeron face protector. So when I'm using my hand removers, it doesn't scratch the dial. Some people like the hand removers and the cellophane. I, or a baggie, I, I go with this. It's just kind of what I am used to doing. Now back to the investigation. We're getting the hands off. The, we found what the problem was with the minute hand. However, this watch is still not running. So something, yeah, there's a foot, there's a missing foot. So something is impeding it from running. Whether a part of that leg is down in that movement or another screw is loose or lint hair something great advice i got from an older watchmaker is that the parts and the pieces don't disappear they go into the watch they don't magically remove themselves from the case or the movement so somewhere in this watch is something that's stopping it from running it looks clean it feels clean but it's not running. There's no broken uh, balance staff. It's winding great. There's no slippage. It's not a broke mainspring. And it seems like it wants to run. It's just not running. And we don't have any stress now. We have all the hands off. It should just run. If the hands were the issue or that case screw or the dial, the foot dial, the foot off of the dial was stopping it. We got those out. So now we're gonna have to keep putting on our detective hat and keep breaking it down. And right now I'm thinking maybe my friend got a better deal. He got a running watch and I didn't, but I do love the adventure. And after I take this screw out, you will see surrounding it is the five ball bearing rotor system that is trademark and on the dial on the case back and on the crown, as you can see here. That is the rotor. Just a very, very clean movement. 1489K. We'll get into this movement a little later. There's a couple firsts for 
a turnomatic on this movement. Now this isn't my typical disassemble. I am trying to check everything the first time because the main goal for me is to get it running, not to do a clean oil and adjustment, but to get it running because I know it was serviced two, three years ago. He hasn't worn it much. There's a problem somewhere and it's in one of these layers. So I'm gonna be very methodical about it. I'm gonna go slower than I usually do. I'm gonna look over all the parts, see if there's any gears that may have a tooth bent or a pivot bent or gunk or lint or hair somewhere because it's stopping that balance wheel from doing its job. And it looks clean, but looks can be deceiving. And once again, we know there's part of the dial foot that was floating in there and there was a screw floating in there. Now, did part of that dial foot get chipped off and it's in between one of the gears? I don't know. We're gonna have to find that out. But let's get the biggest culprit out right now that doesn't wanna run. And that is the balance assembly that has the balance wheel on it, hairspring, and we want to be careful with this because we don't want, we know it, that is a good balance staff. We don't want to break it or bend it just because we're trying to be impatient to find the problem. And once again, check it over. Check it over again because we don't want to, and as you can see right here, it, it's running. It, the pallet fork is going back and forth. The escapement wheel is advancing. So there is something in the train or by the train that is stopping it. It just has to be. Well, let's go ahead and figure this out. So I'm gonna go ahead here and release the power of the mainspring so that when we take apart the bridge over the train, nothing will break or fly or get messed up. And now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the screws that hold, that hold the train bridge down. Get those out of there. And wanna be a little bit organized and strategical. Try to do things the same way when you take apart your watch. And there it is. And clearly I'm gonna go over this very carefully because clearly I missed the foot of the dial so I want to make sure there is no parts or pieces or debris or broken parts in there so kind of want to get into this watch and not be in it very long the less amount of time spent the better it is now to pull this train completely out, we will have to take apart the ratchet wheel that's above the mainspring because that is over the center wheel, the seconds wheel, sorry. And if I was a little better with the tweezers, it wouldn't be flying on me. However, as good as I may be or may not be, I'm just gonna keep this up in the video because it just lets you guys know that not everyone's perfect at what they do. I mean, I could clean this up so it'd just be a masterpiece, but what's the fun of that? You gotta understand, like, things happen. Now let's go ahead and get that barrel bridge off because the barrel bridge that's over the mainspring, it is blocking, the, it's holding down the mainspring, which is holding down uh, other train wheels that we do need to get off of there. Plus, we can see absolutely the whole bottom of this watch movement and anything is hiding because like I said before the escapement wheel is advanced oh, there we go it likes to fly off it's like a jumping bean uh, back to when we advanced the escapement wheel and I said something's impeding or blocking or stopping the whole train this way we can see absolutely everything take every wheel out look at the pinions on them, the teeth on them, make sure nothing is wrong with it and nothing is stuck in those layers. And after we do that, we can be confident whether or not 
it fell out we found find the problem but so far I, I i can't see anything everything looks as it should which is maddening and if i could say that hey this problem happens all the time i can't usually everything is different it's always a learning process and i think that's one thing that really attracted me to this hobby is the fact that it's always changing nothing's routine it's both not boring but it also can be frustrating at times so right now i'm just checking and rechecking and making sure that nothing did shear or shimmy off of this dial that could have possibly gotten lodged within the movement when or if we do get this watch up and running i may make a video on how to do a proper dial foot reassertion i gotta find my dial foot tool let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd want to see and now i'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this i i can't i couldn't find anything we're gonna go ahead and put it back together however i'm gonna have my rotoco I'm gonna hit each gear as best I can to clean it up. And the first gear we're gonna clean here is the unique one to this movement, and that's the intermediate wheel or the offset, offset center wheel. And why it's called offset is because it is not in the middle of the movement. In the middle of the movement is where the sweep second wheel goes. The offset center wheel is held down by that mainspring barrel. And then we got our third wheel right there that does a funky little balancing act on its pivot. So be careful with that. Nothing like rushing and breaking a pivot and then having to scramble to try to get a new one. There is our escapement wheel or escapi, however you want to pronounce it. Most escapement wheels are steel and that goes underneath our third wheel and that will engage our pallet fork, which will back and forth. Once again, cleaning this with as much care as I can and just with the Radico without doing the ultrasonic cleaner. Cause like I said, I want minimum time invested in this. Make sure I'm not damaging anything in the process of putting it together. If I haven't already mentioned it, this wheel is a tricky wheel. Now let's go ahead and finish off the train and get the sweep second hand in there. The sweep second wheel sorry anyone starting out doing this easiest way to remember how to do this is take pictures take pictures when you when it's all assembled while you're taking it apart that way you know which wheels up which wheels down and what pinion and gears go together or just watch the video and do the same movement and follow along whatever you choose now let's go ahead get the barrel bridge on that's what's going to hold down the mainspring and the ratchet wheel to help us wind it. You can do this in any order you want. Some people do put the train bridge on it. It just depends on what you're comfortable with and how you learn. Now let's go ahead and get the screws placed in here. Be careful not to shoot those across the room. It's always fun looking for those. How hard is it to really find a speck of pepper on the floor? <laughs> Tighten those up. Once again, when you tighten this bridge down, you don't have to be super delicate on how much pressure is down there because there's nothing that can really snap. You just wanna make sure that the winding gear and the winding pinion line up while you're placing that bridge on top of it because the hole over the arbor of the mainspring barrel, that's gonna be fine and just slide right in, especially that this is a non-motored wheel, so there's really no tricks there. Just make sure everything is lining up and it is all the teeth are aligned gosh we are so close so close we get this plate on this train bridge on i mean not plate this train bridge on and we're gonna see if we fix the problem i can't even tell you how excited i am if this was as easy as it was to fix this get it going again i would be very happy now let's just wiggle this in. Be careful, you do not want to break the pivots at this point. The technique that I kind of like to use is I like to get the center wheel in first or the sweep second wheel, work in the third wheel, and then come down to the escapement wheel because usually 
the escapement wheel has the most delicate pivots on it and it can snap pretty easy now I am still putting pressure, a little bit of pressure to hold it in place before I screw it in, wind it up a little bit, and we got engagement. So that is a good thing. Now what we need to do is see if this bad boy will run when we put in the balance assembly. And once again, be gentle. We don't wanna break in the pivots off of the balance staff, and we sure don't wanna bend that hairspring because either one of those scenarios leaves us with a lot more work now if we did everything we needed to do and we got everything out of there that we should have we will see this wheel start rotating left and right on its own because there is enough power that in that mainspring for me winding it manually that it should just start taking off and as you can see here it it does not want to take off okay so we're gonna need to see what is going on here. If it ran just a year ago and it isn't right now, I mean, something is still hung up. As you can see, I'm using my blower here, puffing a little bit of air in it at a time. That should be more than enough power to help kickstart it, to engage it to start running on its own because this is in its manual wind form there's no automatic movement there's no rotators on it it is just as manual as it can be so unfortunately i think the verdict is i have not found what is causing this problem to not run and now i'm just going to be looking at everything again if there's if this roller tables on it correctly if that roller table jewels on there correctly which it is i really have nothing to do except take it all apart and while we're thinking about what we missed as we're taking it apart the most obvious thing is the pallet fork and the second most obvious is the mainspring itself I know it was serviced a year, two, three years ago. However, sometimes people do not change out the mainspring and they really need to, and that could be the problem. And since it is the easiest to get out between the two, we're gonna see if that is the reason of the lack of power that the balance assembly is experiencing. Now what we wanna do here is just pop that open and see if it's broke, corroded, or if it's not new. So what I'm gonna do here is take out this mainspring arbor and no, no, maybe, no, nope. I'm gonna flick it out. That's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna flick it out and then I'm gonna try to carefully take out this mainspring. If it is a newer mainspring and was replaced new, the alloys do have more power than most so you want to be careful just checking here to make sure that back part isn't broke it okay well that was wonderful and very unnecessary if you can see there it that mainspring does have that s shape and i'm just reviewing this just to make sure there's no corrosion or pitting or any stress fractures in there but this looks absolutely right so let's go ahead and get this pallet fork out and the only new thing that we need ah uh, ah problem found it should not that pallet fork should not be sticking to the pallet fork bridge like it is so if you could remember i did push that back and forth that should not be sticking. I think we found our culprit and let's figure out what the heck is going on here. I wanna review these pivots, make sure nothing is wrong. Review the jewel, make sure nothing's cracked or fractured or wore. And there is something that almost looks like shellac. So it was sticking, that's where we lost power. It just goes to show you that even though that mainspring looked like it had a lot of power because it blew up everywhere, the smallest things can affect these watches and totally stop them from running. So now 
knowing that it has shellac, I am going to rotico it off. I'm going to get it as clean as possible so I can thoroughly examine that jewel to make sure there is nothing else in there because honestly, I have no idea why there would be the sticky substance on the top, not the bottom, nowhere else within that train. So it's very curious and I really want to make sure that I don't have to take it apart again. That is the problem. The fact that that was sticky there, I'm gonna probably just go ahead, break this all down, and have a peace of mind and clean it. But I'm just gonna clean the top part. I'm not gonna break off the dial side uh, with the date wheel and that. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this train, all the gears, throw that in the basket, throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner, make sure it is 100% gum free. Now, while these are cleaning, the first thing to attack after it attacked us is our friend, the mainspring. And here are some of my wristwatch mainspring winders, just so you guys can see. What we want to do is pick the size that fits into the barrel, the tightest. Go ahead and put that in, and then you wind it with the other side. There's a little knob on there and it just syncs up and then you just wind it into the part carefully. And then when you get down to this end, you want to make sure you don't keep going because you can break that part of the mainspring off and then you're going to need a new mainspring. So kind of work that in with your finger and then Go the opposite way to get it out sometimes the mainspring is caught on there so you're gonna have to help get it off with tweezers and as you can see it's fully in there now we just need to pop it in the housing and we should be on our way pretty simple And for the record, Mainspring 2, Joe 0. Now, this is everyday frustration with any profession that you're going to do. However, we want to go ahead, be careful. Let's not rush. Get poised and do what we know what we can do. So let's get back to where we were. Get that threaded in there. All wound up problem is I lifted it up before it was totally flush it popped out now I'm gonna show you guys that it's gonna be 100% flush before I put it out and just like that Boom, shakalaka. yeah gotta always celebrate the small victories even if you get beat down a few times learn from your mistakes get back up and be better for it the one thing I am happy about this mainspring is that so when they did service it, it was a new mainspring. So I'm very happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just oil it a little bit. I got the Mobius 8200 that I'm using. And yes, this is a very old bottle. What I like to do is use my vintage items and I replace it. So I buy new Mobius oil or grease and I put it in the old bottles because I just like the vintage look. I'm a sucker for that. One of my problems, I don't like to throw out boxes, bottles or boxes. Hi, my name is Joe. Now, as we got all the parts out of the cleaner, I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up because you've already see, seen the reassembly of the watch up until the point when you put on the automatic works. I'm just gonna speed through that. However, I was gonna mention about this beautiful movement, the 1489K movement. Not all Kentucky watches have the same movement. This is a 1489K, it is mid late 60s. The early Kentuckys produced in like 1952, 
They have the caliber 1414 without the date. The one with the date is the 1424 based on the ETA 2385. And then in 52, they also started making the 1412 without the date and the 1422 with the date however these are smaller case size about 34 millimeters without the crown the other two are 37 millimeters without the crown now in 56 they did start making the caliber 1492u without the date and caliber 1439u with the date and that was based off of the ETA movement 2430 and the 2433, the case size being 34 millimeter without the crown, a little bit smaller watch than the first Contiki's that did come out. All four of those did run at 18,000 beats per hour. And then in the mid 60s, they started to come out with the caliber 1489K and that was based off the ETA 2433. Checking right here to make sure we have have power on the train and we do it had 21,600 beats per hour and it also had the added function of a screw down crown on top of it being a 37 millimeter case okay everyone this is the moment of truth I don't know how many more times I can really stand to take this apart put it together I've cleaned it I thought I found the problem hopefully this will start run running on its own yes Yes, 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 yes. Do you see what I'm talking about? That is wonderful. That is what I needed. I needed to see that wheel start working on its own without any manipulation around it. Needless to say, I am very happy. And now let's get this bad boy back together. Now getting back into the history of this 1489K self-winding movement. One of the innovations is the bi-directional winding of the rotor and you can see there the two wheels on that top of that movement the smaller ones it can go clockwise or counterclockwise to wind it having less of a need to wind it manually although if you need to as you've seen on this video you can wind it manu manually which we are doing right here and you can see those two little gears at the top wind and when the rotor is put on that it can go clockwise or counterclockwise let's go ahead and continue assembling this watch now what we're going to do is grab that rotor that has the Eterna 5 ball bearing rotor system as you can see right there again it's pretty simple to screw that down it doesn't really have to go in any direction it just sits in there and usually the gears will slide in very simply and right here just spinning it making sure it's engaging that the bi-directional wheels go both forward and backwards now to the case to the crystal let's replace that pop that out and it, upon further review of this there is way more crud and gunk and rust in there than I originally saw so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this out first I'm gonna use this toothpick wood has less abrasion on it than your typical tweezers or whatever so I'm gonna try to get this off the best I can however it's not doing the job I would love it to do and as you can see there that gasket is pretty crusty as well so I'm gonna get that out go ahead and get my fiberglass scratch brush. This has less, way less abrasion than brass, but more abrasion than the toothpick has. And as you can see here, we're getting way more of this off the inside of the case. And I want this off because rust is very corrosive and it spreads like wildfire. And if we don't get it now and we put it back together, it could migrate to the watch, which I absolutely do not want. So I'm gonna get it all off here the best I can. And then I'm gonna throw it into the ultrasonic cleaner to get everything off of it, especially getting all these fiberglass particles out of it. And we are done. It is looking good now. If we don't have exact specifications of what case gasket we need, all you have to do is get your tool and measure it. Go into your assortment and pick out the one that is matching the size of the diameter of the case. 
Now there's a couple of different ways to apply the silicone sealant onto the gasket. Here's one way that I really like. It's just this casker O-ring that's loaded with the silicone sealant. Another way is taking it out yourself with a toothpick, putting it in saran wrap, and then putting the gasket in there. I mean, there's different ways. Right now I'm kind of happy with this because it keeps the gasket flat and smooth. And when you get the some of the gaskets, it can get balled up and then you're trying to untangle it and it can just be kind of a hassle. When applying this, make sure you keep it away from lint or dust because it will just suck it up and then you have to clean it off and get the sealant back on there. And then just take your time, work it into the grooves and it should just fall into place if you get the right size diameter gasket for your watch. And there we go. It is all set to go. And hindsight is we should have put that gasket in after we put in the new crystal. However, I'll just do that off camera. No big deal. Now on to the crystal, making sure that everything is clean as it should be. And yes, I do have a crystal press, but sometimes I like to see if they will pop in and it does. Tight fit, I am happy. It is looking good. Let's go on to the next part. Let's get that dial on and I will show you a way that it's probably frowned upon, but right now I can't find my dial foot fitting tool. I want to get this going, make sure that it is keeping good time. And truth be told, if I'm trying to be honest with everyone, this is the only second time I'm gonna use this little hack. And what I'm gonna do is put two little sticky tabs on the inside of the date wheel on the highest points of that movement so it will grab around the same position as where you see that foothold is for the dial and these are adhesive or like a gel on both sides and that is just the top cover for it that is placed on there and technically you only really need to do one i'm just going to do two to because it's so far removed from that edge. So I'm gonna put these on here, let it adhere to the movement a little bit, making sure I'm not covering up any pivots or anything that needs to be moved or free. And as you can see here, it's, it's just a clear, kind of like a 3M type substance. And then go ahead, put that dial on gently, push down where you placed it, and it is holding, it is good. From what I hear, they will last a while. Like I said before, I've only done this one other time. And with that, I just found a better dial that I had off of a different watch and I just totally replaced it because the dial did have some water damage to the edge. And right now, all I wanna do is make sure that date wheel does flick and I'm happy with it. So we can move forward with the hands and getting those in the right position. And to do that, you need to make sure that you had just flipped that date wheel. So then you can line it up at the 12. So at midnight, that date wheel will flip to 26 and so on and so forth. I do use tweezers. Some people like to use those hand tools that go down and make sure it is 100% level. Good. This is just the way I was taught and that's the way I continue to go with it. Just the tweezers. The problem is with the tweezers, if you do slip, you can mar and scratch that dial and it is heartbreaking to say the least. Speaking from experience, however, if I can get this in the right spot, I'll put it on without marring it. Just be careful. We're almost done. No reason to rush. And there we go. Now, yes, in the comments, that's not on straight. It's not lined up perfectly. I agree. Why do I not care if it's really lined up or straight? Because I'm gonna take this back apart because I'm gonna fix that dial foot because I'm not gonna replace this dial because I absolutely love the look of it. I like the worn out look. I like the 
wear the age absolutely a fan so I just want to make sure that nothing's catching everything's smooth and if you see that second hand going you know it's running like a champ so I'm happy I'm gonna pop out that crown and stem that way we can get it into our case that has the reapplied sealant on the gasket and while it's in place I'm gonna go ahead and put the stem and crown in and while I'm putting this back together let's go ahead and talk about how the Contiki line this was one of the last altered ETA movements for the Contiki line later the Turner just started using the full ETA movements without altering the specifications. For example, the Contiki Super Diver has the ETA 2824-2. Contiki Diver ETA caliber is the 2892. Later on, they have the Contiki that has four hands with the caliber 2836. And the Contiki GMT, it has the ETA 2893 going on to the Contiki chronograph has one of my favorite the Lemanias with the 283 caliber so advancing into their growth they finally got into like the Valjo 7750 movement which also is one of my favorite Valjo uh, chronograph the current chronograph movements so very cool history with the Contiki lots of different growth in this line a big divers friend because of the waterproofing the screw down crown and the workhorses that are the movements they can definitely take a beating and continue to perform as they should now just finishing up and getting these casing clamps in here and as you can see it sometimes it's tricky gravity takes over and they go in places you don't want them to go now a funny story is when i first started out uh, working on wristwatches, pocket watches, and whatnot. Uh, some of the movements, for whatever reason, don't have those clay, uh, casing clamps in them. I used to think, like, oh my gosh, these are such a hard item to find. And because in the movement, some of them were missing, some of them weren't complete, like this one, where it had two different sets in there. And then you realize a little bit later, you go online and you find a pack of 240 for $15. So there you go. The more you know, the better you are. And getting back to this now beautiful Eternomatic Contiki, I'm going to do not a full close on it. I'm going to hand tighten it with my hand tool. I'm not going to put it in a case back press because clearly I have to get back in there to change that dial and fix it properly. But in the meantime, I do want to kind of wear it around the house i'm really not going to take it out anywhere or put it around water so i'm not going to do a pressure test on it i'm not going to put it in a bigger case back tightener press and really tighten it down because i'm going to go ahead and remove that dial after i make sure everything's running because if everything's not running right i'm going to have to go back to the drawing board and take it back down and see what's going on from the initial looks of it, it does look like it's running it does look like it's keeping time from the time that i actually put it on there and set it now i'm gonna set it with the right time and i'm just gonna go ahead and kind of track it and see what it's doing and eventually put it on the timograph to make sure everything's fully functional as it should be looking good to me the screw down crown is on tight very happy with that now i'm gonna go ahead and finish this up to say it's been fun is kind of an understatement to say that it's been interesting is a true statement i'm gonna go ahead and if you don't remember when we first took this apart the spring bars were a little sticky in a way because they probably got bent over time so what i'm going to do is go ahead and just replace the spring bars they're cheap they're a dime a dozen that way we know that everything is going to be fully functional and always be careful when you're putting on spring bars on the bracelet because you can slip with that tool and just scratch the case up and no one wants a scratched up case always be careful and the other thing that i do really love about this bracelet is that it does have the trademark contiki five ball rotor ball system on the bracelet clasp itself that's pretty unique and that's why i won't switch out this band for any reason no matter how it feels or whatnot but it does have a 
I don't know, kind of like a Seiko feel to the band. It, it's not horrible, but it's not great. It is a little tinny, if that, if that makes sense. It's not a solid like a Omega or a Rolex, but it is a Turnabatic Contiki. And man, it's mine. It's beautiful. It is up and running. One flaw left, the dial. After we know that it is good, we'll go ahead and correct that. Once again, in the comments below, let me know if that's something you'd like to see. If not, I'll just do it off camera, no big deal. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here's the Eternomatic Contiki 20 with the 1485K 21 Joule automatic movement. Wow. Uh couple takeaways from that process first off i'm not gonna go through this and edit it i'm not gonna shorten down this video i've already thought about that and i'm not gonna do it so when you see this video it's not gonna be completely cut down i'm gonna probably shorten it speed it up a little bit the beauty and the frustration of this breakdown i was one step away from fixing this watch completely on the first go around but that's the process with watchmaking or anything you want to do. You have to learn from your mistakes. In the future, will I go ahead and remove that pallet fork just to check on top from this watch? Absolutely yes. This watch was not in my ownership for very long, so therefore I didn't know what to expect. I thought by cleaning off the gears, maybe something came out. Maybe there was some hair or lint or whatever may have been on the gears stopping it because when I got down to that pallet fork, you could see I could go back and forth with it with my tweezers. However, when I put everything back together, it would not power it because there was too much gunk on the top of that pallet fork. You got to see a mishap with the mainspring. You got to see crystal replaced and partially cleaning. However, the watch is up and running and I couldn't be happier with it. Thank you for sticking around and watching all this video and your support it means a lot. Comment below if you would have done something differently. It's all of a learning process and any wannabe watchmakers out there want to take up this hobby, I say go for it. There will be road bumps. Keep going. You'll be on the floor searching. You'll become really good at that. And after you master that skill, you're going to master the other things to stop you from getting on the floor searching for everything, it's just progression. And that's what was gonna make you better than most if you keep at it. Learn from your mistakes. And as always, be on the lookout for mechanical art. The hunt is real. Until next time, see you later. He was just over it. The watch would run and start and run and start. No. We, I'm gonna talk.